Hey everyone, we're back for part two of our 1080 Ti hybrid build. This is the build up. The next and final part of the video will be the results. We just got back from PAX East, so it was delayed by a few days. But we've, I've got the card here. I have the liquid cooler ready. We're going to build it up. I'll walk you through the process in case you want to do this on your own. But before getting into that, this coverage is brought to you by iFixit.com and their iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit, which I accidentally brought through airport security at PAX East. Fortunately, I did not have to expend some of our social capital and ask for a replacement. TSA, despite ogling every single piece in it, did not steal it. So, uh, brought to you by that, you can use code GAMERSNEXUS at ifixit.com if you want $5 off of an order. The ProTech Toolkit's a good place to start. Uh, I think this one's 70 bucks, so we're gonna be using a lot of this stuff for our teardown here today. But, uh, let's get to it. So the card, this is the 1080 Ti. It's, uh, it's a video card, it's PCP. Very straightforward. This is a Founders Edition board, so nothing crazy going on. We are able to use the Founders Edition base plate, which is this part here, and part of the shroud. I've removed the other part of the shroud, uh, which goes here along with the window. So the, there's the window that used to be there. And the heat sink, we've removed all those because instead we are going to be putting an EVGA CLC on it, which I'll link in the description below. This is uh, the same one that they sold in the 980 Ti hybrid kits, but you'll also find them in the 1080 and 1070 hybrid kits. And I believe it'll work on the 1080 Ti though, we're about to find out. I think it works on the Titan X, which is basically a 1080 Ti in terms of board layout. Uh, so this has the protruded copper plate. We found it to work pretty damn well for liquid cooling a GPU, but uh, there's the one issue of, uh, you're basically, yeah, that'll work for that, cool. Uh, the one issue is VRM and VRAM cooling. So we lose some of that cooling potential, but this time I'm gonna be mounting some thermocouples to the VRM FETs number two and seven and to the back side of the PCB to make sure that the back plate isn't trapping any heat in a way that's detrimental. So we'll be doing all of that today alongside the buildup. <clears throat> I need thermocouples. Put one right here. So first thing we're gonna do, I applied some thermocouples to this. You are not gonna do that step, and so we didn't show it to reduce confusion. But we've got the thermocouples on there, which means I can start reapplying the base plate and this is all one piece right now, uh, which makes it seem easy, but we actually have to remove this part so that we can connect the pump and, uh, and fan for the radiator into the board power, which is currently where this blower fan's connected. Now we still want the blower fan because that is going to be used to cool the VRM uh, or the VRMs as much as it can be without the rest of the heatsink there, and then we'll use the thermal couples to see how effective that actually is. This comes out, that's your LED power, and now we need, we've got access to the VRM fan, which I already unplugged in there. I need to take this off momentarily to connect the radiator uh, pump and fan header to that. So this should probably come off. Or is there a screw underneath still? Okay, cool. All right, so uh, the easiest way would be to pull that base plate off, remove the screw from the underside that's holding this part of the shroud on, but I didn't do that. That's fine. <laughs> so we've got that connected now. We've basically more or less spliced in the pump and fan power into the PCB where we plug in the VRM fan and all of them are connected so this will still spin provided we're not dragging on a cable which you will want to spin that fan before you close it to make sure uh, that doesn't happen and you can just kind of shove all this over into the corner just do so without without pulling any of the individual wires out obviously okay big screws go back in first And then this piece, we're going to plug the LED power back in. I need to figure out how I want to route this. I'm thinking up and over. And then you can see the partition here will go around the outside of the fan like this. So we're actually going to be 
keeping those cables out for sure and hopefully routing them around the outside of it. That needs to be routed under. Okay, cool, cool. So I routed this uh, cable end sort of around a pillar right here, and that allows us to get in there without blocking anything or without uh, restricting my ability to install this pump. The next thing we care about is one, does it make contact, which it does, and we can validate that by applying some thermal paste later. And then two, do the tubes uh, route out unobstructed, and they do. So we're actually in really good shape for this mod. Okay. All right, cool. Looks good. Disconnect this fan so I can route it a bit better. And now we need to secure the we need to secure the base plate <coughs> to the rest of the unit. I'm not going to worry about the pump for a moment. Flip it over. Let's just get a few screws in there to hold everything together. So for this one, I'm going to pull this, and then we need a really dumb size. I think it's a four millimeter. Let's see. Yes, so this is a four millimeter uh, Allen head. We'll get a couple of these tiny screws in there just to hold it together. I'm going to put one in each corner so it stays even. So we're more or less held together. The thermal paste is, of course, the favorite part for YouTube to criticize. I will say this immediately. Um, you want to, with the GPU, you want absolute full coverage of that whole die. If you miss a spot on that die, it, it, the, the, the silicon die will die. Uh, so this is not a matter of put a small dot in the middle and hope it spreads. Because if you sp spread it out, and let's say we end up with a circle that is maybe like, like there, where you're cutting off the corners, that can and will destroy a GPU provided the right scenario provided the right part of the GPU uh, begins to overheat because this entire thing is more or less in use. It's not like an IHS on a CPU where you've got parts that are actually not covering where the die is. Uh, and it also doesn't have an IHS in the same way a CPU does. So I'm going to be generous here because truth be told, there's no negative impact to performance for having too much thermal paste on a GPU unless it's to the point where smashing it down with the cooler doesn't um, doesn't force it out of the sides anyway, which this will if it is a problem. Uh, anything extra will, will be pushed out the sides once I start torquing this down. Okay. All right, so that's installed. This is an instance of monkey tight, not, not gorilla tight. Don't go crazy on that. You can crack the die if you really, really torque it down with an electric driver or something. And all of these cables you will not have. These are because of the thermocouples that we use for testing. So pay no mind. I think we're just gonna seal up the back now. All right, cool, that's more or less in place for the back plate or for the uh, expansion plate. Now, uh, next we have to start screwing in all of these tiny, really, really tiny screws. And these will break exceptionally easily. So if you over tighten them, and by over tighten, I mean basically it'll stop. You'll hit a resistance point. And if you try to turn it once more, it will snap at the stem. Uh, so keep that in mind when, when reapplying these. 
So I'm going to use a, I normally use a Phillips zero, I think. I want to say this one, or is it zero, zero? No, that's, that's, yeah, that's right. So here it comes. I'm going to hit the resistance point. That's it. If I turn at all any further, it will snap. All right, so I got the last thermocouple on there that we're going to put on. Now we just need to screw everything in. Cool. All right, these stupid things. Now we need these dumb things in there. Yeah, that's better. Two millimeters, that's what you want. This is t totally without function, this part. We're not going to put all the pieces back in because we've removed some of the shroud and the window, which will not definitely not fit with that. Oh, maybe it doesn't have anything to go into. Have we removed that part? Okay, I think those actually, in my version of the mod, are not going to fit back in because of how I've installed this uh, with the cables. But fan spins, plate secured from these four screws, so that's good enough for me. I think this is done. I think it's actually complete. This is one of the easiest hybrid mods we've ever done. Um, I'm going to push all the screws, pieces aside. We'll save those separately. Uh, basically, we've got a 1080 Ti hybrid. It should eliminate some of the clock peakiness, I guess, with the original testing that we saw, it will allow a higher clock speed. Theoretically, a couple percent improvement in FPS natively, just from being cooled better. And we'll see what it does for overclocking as well. So check back for part three, subscribe as always for that. We have some other cool teardowns we've done recently, including the Nintendo Switch and the Joy-Cons that went with it. So if those interest you, they are on the channel. Go to gamersnexus.net for more information, patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly. And I'll mention the sponsor again, iFixit.com. Thank you. Use code GamersNexus for $5 off. Thanks for watching. Check back for the results. I'll see you all next time.